Hi, welcome back. This video will be a quick tutorial on how to make seafoam trees. So on the internet there's quite a few tutorials for making seafoam trees and they recommend different things. So what I'm going to do in this video is try five different materials for making the actual foliage on the tree just to see which works best. So the first material I'll be using is this Javis, Jarvis, I think that's how you say it, um, Countryside Scenic Scatter which is a light green spring kind of colour and this is slightly coarser grains than something like blended turf but obviously not as coarse as something like clump foliage. The second material I'll be using is this blended turf from Woodland Scenics. This is their green blend. I've seen videos that recommend against using this for seafoam trees so we'll have a go at that and see how it comes out. Compared to the first material, it's a much finer um, material. And I also have another colour for this, just in case the first one is a bit uniform, I can mix in some uh, burnt grass colour as well. The third material is very much similar to the first one. It's also from this Jarvis Countryside Scenics range. Um, it's very similar in appearance, it's just a dark green colour. The fourth material is good old Woodland Scenics Clump Foliage. This is quite a coarse material compared to the others. I will be breaking this down into even smaller um, pieces before applying it to the sea foam. And this is their light green colour. And then the final material I'm going to use is uh, static grass. Uh, this is 2.5mm static grass from Nock, and it's a sort of a summer mix. I have seen static grass used before on uh, sea foam trees, but not very often, so I'll be, I'll be interested to see how this turns out as well. Okay, so first of all, sea foam. I finally managed to get hold of some of this recently at the Malaysian uh, Miniature Hobby Show a few weekends ago. And so I thought I'd start to make a few trees out of it. So the first thing you notice when you open the box of sea foam is it has a, a very distinct smell. Um, not necessarily a bad smell, but definitely a, a distinct smell. I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, inside the box, there are lots and lots of pieces of sea foam. Often they're sort of tangled together. You have to be a little bit careful separating them out. But you can see each of these pieces represents something that could become a tree. And of course, because this is a natural material, there's loads of variety in here. Uh, you get some sort of tall, thin trees, you get other ones which are short and fat. Uh, really, it's just a look of the draw, which is actually part of the uh, attraction for me, I think. So you'll often see a few sort of thin leaves like this in the sea foam. You can just pull those out with a pair of tweezers. So sea foam is a great material for modelling trees because it, well, it is basically a plant. It is a plant. Um, so it has that very natural look, uh, the splitting of the branches, the, the scale, everything seems to be uh, nice and correct and very natural looking. Of course, there's obviously a variety of trees in nature. Generally speaking, the trees that you're going to model using sea foam will be the sort of smaller, thinner trees. If you think about the width of these uh, stems, they're only maybe at most, maybe two millimeters across which in 1 35th scale is uh, 70 millimeters, and therefore you know, not really that big of a tree. Okay, so great example, this could be a huge tree here. Um, that could be a nice pine tree, I think, perhaps, or like a fir tree, that looks really, really nice, very pleased with that. And then even in the bottom of the box, there's another three or four here. So I think just going through this one box, there's probably a good, at least 15 trees here. So even these materials in the bottom of the box, these broken off branches, I'll keep these because they'll be quite useful for things like hedges and bushes and so on. Okay, so here are the five trees that I've picked out. They need a little bit of cleanup. First of all, I need to pull out the um, any leaves that are in there. They generally come off quite well. Got to be a little bit careful not to snap, snap the stems, but it's not too bad. And then once the leaves are pulled out, I generally leave about five centimeters, two inches at the bottom of each stem. Very few trees have branches all the way down to the ground, and of course you need a little bit of stem to actually 
plant the trees in a diorama or on your layout. So the first step after clean up of these trees is to give them a first of all a coat of brown spray paint and then a light coat of grey. Most trees are not entirely brown so that's why I use the two colours there. The easiest way I find to do this is to tape them to the edge of a box like this. This is an old, um, the bottom of a Tamiya model box. And then I'll just take these outside and give them a quick spray of brown. And then even while the brown is still wet, a quick, a very light spray of grey. Okay, so the paint has dried on the trees now for a couple of hours. So the next step is to apply some kind of an adhesive to the sea foam. Uh, in order to get the foliage to stick. Now, most commonly recommended online is the spray adhesive. I just can't get that near where I live. I don't know why. Um, it just doesn't seem to be available. So what I'm going to use, uh, I don't want to duck it in any glue. I don't want to dip the tree in glue. So I'm going to make a mix of uh, one to one PVA glue and water and use that in a garden sprayer to actually spray over the tree um, and then stick the foliage to that. So before I move away from the camera to spray the first tree, uh, this is the first material we're going to use. And you can see I've put only really a tiny amount in there, and I'm pretty sure that will be more than enough for a single tree. Okay, here's the glue tree. So I'm just going to pick up the scatter and just drop it from above onto the tree. Doing it from above because obviously I'd prefer the leaves to be on top of the branches rather than underneath them. It's a good idea to make sure you're, you've uh, wiped any glue off your hands as well at this point because the leaves and the, the foliage material does have a habit of sticking to your fingers rather than the branches if it has a choice. Just trying to get some good coverage there. Okay, that looks about right. I'll stick this in this handy piece of uh, foam and we'll come back to it once we've done the other trees. Okay, I'm going to move quickly through the rest of the trees because the process is very much the same. Small amount of the material in the container, spray the tree, bring it back, drop the material onto the tree. And you can see this is actually sticking quite densely, this uh, blended turf. Actually, at the moment, looking at this, this looks more, reminds me more of a, um, a bush or a hedge than it does actually a tree. So we'll see how that compares to the other ones. Okay, now it's time for the uh, darker Jarvis uh, scatter. And actually just pouring this out of the uh, bag. I think I'm starting to regret this already. This is quite a highly saturated, almost kind of luminous green. I'm not convinced that's actually going to work very well. I, I can't really imagine this colour in nature anywhere. Um, but we'll see. You never know. So here goes. This Jarvis material is definitely a much, uh, much different uh, quality to the blended turf uh, from Woodland Scenics. It's got a much nicer feel for this kind of application. It's just the colour for this one I'm not convinced about. But actually, hmm, I can see that could be a sort of pine colour perhaps. The shape of the tree is not really a pine shape, but the, the colour itself could be a pine tree. And the next material I'll be using is this uh, Woodland Scenics clump foliage. And before I do anything else, I'm just going to try to break these pieces into even smaller pieces. One of the problems with this material actually is that when you break it into small pieces, it still does tend to stick to itself. So if you drop small pieces on top of each other, they tend to just form one big piece again. But I'm going to break this down 
quite a bit more before I go and spray the tree. Okay, rather stupidly on my part, I forgot to start the camera again while I was adhering the clump foliage to the sea foam. So I don't actually have any video footage of doing that, but I do have the final result, which is here. I went for quite a light scattering, and we'll see how that compares to the other methods. Okay, then finally, the 2.5mm static grass. I have no idea how this one's going to turn out. Here is the glued tree. So let's go. And you can see straight away there I've made a, a user error in that I've got quite a lot of static grass. I've got a big clump of it at the top of the tree. Hopefully when I flip that upside down that will just fall off again. Yeah, it did. Okay, good. Okay, actually that is looking quite nice. The thing about the static grass is that there's a mix of colours in here. It's uh, There's browns, almost reddish colours, greens and yellows there as well. So it gives a much more natural um, appearance than some materials, particularly the blended turf. Okay, so let's look at the five trees together. So we've got from left to right the uh, Jarvis light green, the Woodland Scenics blended turf, the Jarvis dark green, the Woodland Scenics uh, clump foliage, and then finally the static grass. So I will show you a close-up of each of these trees individually in a moment, but the first thing I'd say is actually none of them look terrible. They all look pretty good. Uh, I've got a couple of favourites in here I think definitely already, but none of them look very bad at all. So let's take a look at some close-ups. So I'll show you a quick video and then I will show you a still image because it's easy to see the detail in the still image. This is the Jarvis light green. And I really like this. I think this looks one of the more realistic of the five, definitely. The natural shape of the Jarvis material is much more leaf-like. And perhaps because it's a little bit glossy, it just has a slightly different, um, it has a, a variation in the colours there, which really helps to make it more realistic. It's attached itself quite nice and lightly as well. There are no big clumps of the material. And you can see that in the close-up here as well. That looks quite natural. I, I really like that. This is one of my favourites. Let's look at number two. Okay, here is the tree with the blended turf. Uh, this doesn't look bad. It's got a different appearance, a much clumpier appearance compared to the other trees. I'll bring that quite close. I think on this, the blended turf seems to have stuck a little bit more to the branches uh, compared to the other methods. So if we take a look at the close-ups, so I guess because the blended turf is quite fine, it has actually stuck much more to those branches, you can see that there, uh, especially on the close-up. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Trees do have sort of moss and things growing over them, especially in, in sort of jungle conditions in the tropics and so on. So it depends, I would say, on what you're kind of looking for. The colour is quite uniform on this. That's one thing I would say. But it doesn't look bad. Okay, next up is the Jarvis Dark Green. Very similar properties to the Light Green in terms of its uh, adhesion power. I'm not sure if I like this or really dislike it. The colour's a little bit... Mm, I'm, not, I'm not sure about this one. I can't make my mind up about this one. Okay, next, clump foliage. Uh, I went very light with the clump foliage on this. Perhaps a little bit too light, but at the same time I didn't want to really overwhelm the tree with loads and loads and loads of thick clumps. Most trees you can actually see into them. You can see the branches and the, and the trunk, so... By no means should this be completely covered. Mm, I think that technique probably needs work. That's probably more a uh, user error on my part than anything else. And then finally, the static grass. This turned out a lot better than I thought. The static grass has taken really, really well. Because it was quite short, you, you can't tell so much that it is actually static grass. I guess 2.5 millimeters 
uh, 135th scale is what about 85 millimeters which is um, a reasonable size for our leaves and so on on a tree and again if you look at the close-up of this one that looks it looks a little bit actually like um, pine needles I think this is one of my favorites okay so let's look at the five trees again I would say, looking at these five, my favorites are the first and the last. So the light green Jarvis scatter and the static grass. None of them look terrible and I can, I can see all of these having some application. Even the, the fourth one there with the clump foliage, perhaps with a little bit more foliage, or perhaps a slightly different color, maybe um, an autumn tree that's sort of losing its leaves. And of course all these materials, the Jarvis scatter, the blended turf, the static grass and so on, they're all available in, in multiple different colors. But I, I would say for now, I think my, my favorites are the first one and the fifth one. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that quick overview of different uh, sea foam tree methods. I did actually use another type of Jarvis scatter for the tree that I made recently in my uh, Lorraine Ambulance Diorama. You can see a link to that in the top right right now. That was a mix of um, sort of greens and, and dark reds, browns and yellows. I really wasn't sure whether or not that would work, but it actually came out really nicely as a autumn or fall tree where its leaves are turning color and just getting ready to fall. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do feel free to like it, to subscribe and to share the video. And if you have any ideas that work well for sea foam trees or indeed any other methods that work well for trees in general, feel free to leave a comment below. So thank you for watching and see you next time.